All right. Uh, we haven't had one of these, I think, in two months already. Uh, we uh, we didn't have much to report and kept it asynchronously. But today there is a, there is an important topic that would be worth the synchronous conversation, uh, and that is the long term support policy. Um, I, I structured the conversation alongside multiple points, uh, so I'm going to try to give a bit of context uh, and why is it important. Um, unless it's obvious, um, we're going to describe what other different version state. Uh, what is the timeline that we propose for the different versions of Comet BFT and the decision tree that we've been using to decide whether a specific PR should land in a specific version of Comet BFT. And this is, I think, where we're going to spend most of the time today. Um, I don't know if we have anyone on V034. Uh, I do think we have a couple of teams who are on 37 and some teams that are on, on 50 today, on uh, um, SDK 50 slash comment VFT 38, and then gather some input on the V1 LTS. Um, yeah, it's, it's um, I think the main, the main, uh, the main input that I would like to gather is some signals whether uh, the community of Comet BFT users and the SDK uh, is comfortable with the pace that we are we are uh, going to highlight here. And in particular, uh, we're gonna we're gonna show that we're gonna try to mark uh, 34 end of life pretty soon at the end of this year. Also 37 end of life, and we're gonna go into the details. What is BF and HCF mean? Uh, what does NF mean and so on. Uh, so these are the four comment versions. Uh, but before we jump into those details, I uh, yeah I want to give a bit of room if anyone would like to cover any other topics besides long-term support policy, we could get those out of the way and we could just focus on this. Or, uh, or if there's specific points that you would like me to add uh, regarding long-term support policy, I could just add them here and we, we make sure we dedicate time to have uh, that discussion as well. Otherwise, I'll, Sorry, I'll just that's, that's uh, the end of life schedule for January first, twenty four. Does that mean twenty five? I might have wrote in written it wrong. No, yes, this is January first, twenty twenty five. Here, the picture that I okay. showed. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes get confused about twenty twenty four and twenty. Yeah. Um. Uh, good question, Adam. Okay, I'll I'll just go ahead and I'll I'll try to speed run through it because I think most of you know what all of this is about. Uh, so please just tell me to slow down or ask questions wherever I'm not making much sense. Uh, so V034 of Comet BFT was an LTS version effectively because it's been maintained for such a long time with uh, with critical fixes, but that was done unwillingly. It wasn't really a, a deliberate choice. Uh, so we want to create predictability for, for, for users and for ourselves as maintainers. We want to uh, also be able to plan better and have an idea of what we're doing the next year. Uh, this helps not only the mental health of the maintainers, but also better coordination with the other core teams, with the SDK, IBC, Cosmosm, and so on. Uh, and having a regular uh, and predictable schedule also encourages all teams to uh, upgrade regularly, to have healthy security practices, uh, and we have a certain expectation that, you know, every six months or every one year, we're, uh, we're going to change and uh, we're going to upgrade the stack. So we want to make V1 an LTF. That's a separate point. Uh, beside the regularity, we also want certain versions to be more like milestones or beacons. Uh, you might have seen the SDK, um, the SDK post that they wrote last week. It's uh, announcing long-term support for the Cosmos SDK. Uh, if not, I really encourage you reading that. It's a really interesting and very relevant. Joe was asking if you placed the order. Joe was asking if you placed the order. Yeah. Uh, Teddy, did you want to say something? I about, already, I uh... already added. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I think that was unwitting. I, no sorry, I, I told them to mute. No worries, no worries. Um, I'll continue. Yeah. So SDK, please, please read the blog post that they wrote. I think it's really relevant. Uh, with regards to Comet specifically. We, we want to make V1 an LTS, uh, not only because it aligns with the SDK Olympus uh, V52 LTS plan, uh, but because V1 is, a, is a, a decent place where we could do it. There is uh, enough set of features that we have uh, added, EVTS, ABCI V2, performance improvements, many efficiency improvements, both in storage and bandwidth, uh, to provide motivation to upstream to operator 
but it doesn't have that many features to make it a risky upgrade. So we look at V1 as not risky, actually. Yes, thanks, Facundo, for uh, for uh, sharing in the chat uh, the SDK um, long-term support class. So I'll take a 10 second break here. If anything I've said was controversial, please tell me now because otherwise it's, um, yeah, uh, it may be difficult to, to progress. Cool, glad to hear it's not controversial. Okay, uh, so we use these names to refer to different uh, stages of a Comet BFT version. Before we release the Comet BFT version, we just call it, a, it's a future release. So it's not yet released. After we release it, uh, as we're doing now with V1, it enters into this new feature stage or new new, new features uh, state. Um, after a certain period of time, that version is gonna be so old that we cannot put new features on it. And then it becomes, uh, it, it enters the state of, it's only for bug fixes. So we're reducing the amount of things we backport and we're only backporting bug fixes. After even more time, we're not even gonna backport bug fixes, but we're only gonna backport high and crit critical severity bug fixes. And after uh, six months, one year or so, uh, that version is, is marked as end of life. So we have, it's a future release, then you do new features, then you do bug fixes, then you do high and critical fixes, and then it's marked end of life. It's like most other software out there. We do have experimental versions. Uh, or experimental branches. So we have 37 experimental and 38 experimental. And uh, this is generally for PRs that are uh, that we don't have enough confidence that they are correct or that they are uh, that they do not affect performance. Uh, so if this is the branch where we sometimes break the rule, uh, we could say that okay, January 2025, uh, we're only doing new features for uh, V038, uh, but then we have V038 experimental and experimental allows us put, to put other things that uh, do not do not match these different states. So experimental is experimental. Uh, it also gives access, uh, uh, obviously it gives access to features that we perceive as risky, as I said, or we haven't had time to test them. We haven't had the, the capacity or the ability to test them because they use certain certain uh, certain app chain assumptions or certain environment or context assumptions. And these are generally not needed for most users. Cool. Uh, one example here was, I think, something that Osmosis uses on 37 experimental, which are some storage improvements and pruning. Uh, and on 38, I think we also have a couple of experimental stuff uh, backported. So, we, this is more of a bureaucratic or administrative things just to have a terminology. And now we get into the most interesting part of the conversation. And this is where I would like everyone to either push back or to encourage us to be even more aggressive than we could be. Um, so aggressive meaning that, actually I'll just give an overview and then and I'll let everyone give input. So uh, we're thinking that it could be a good idea to mark uh, 34 as end of life on January, 2025. From what we know, there are still chains on 34. I'm not actually able to, uh, I don't have good channels of communication to those chains. I tried to invite a couple of them today, but I don't think they showed up. Uh, they often just ignore me. So uh, it's it's difficult for me to to assess if this is reasonable. So I'm, I'm uh, very glad to take feedback if this is too aggressive. It gives essentially six more months for chains to transition from 34 to 37. Uh, once you're on 37, there is not much time left though, because 37, we are uh, still doing some bug fixes, but it's soon we're planning to do it uh, in, in a couple of months to mark it as high and critical fixes only. And then at the same time as 34, end of life. Uh, 38 is a different, uh, it's a different um, game. So for 38, we're gonna keep it with new, uh, with new fixes, uh, with uh, implementing bug fixes until the end of this year. So until January 1st, 2025 and then six more months of high and critical fixes. So this is almost like a semi-long-term um, semi, semi -long -term support, uh, 38. Uh, and then middle of next year, middle of 2025, exactly a year from today or 11 months from today, end of life. Uh, this, this might be too conservative, but I, I took the decision here based on the fact that some chains are transitioning today uh, and I've been told that some chains should be given one more year after they transition from a version. Uh, 
so that they can come back to that version if they find a bug. Uh, so some chains are transitioning today to 38. And uh, since 38 is, is like a major, uh, it's a major upgrade from 37 with vote extensions, uh, we're just giving one more year until end of life. And finally, V1, um, it's gonna have new features. We're, hopefully we're gonna release it even before October 1st. It, uh, right now the ball is in SDK court. It, it might be August, it might be September. Uh, I, I've been told that it's most likely before end of August, but it might be September. Uh, assuming it's going to be October, it doesn't really matter. We're going to give it uh, one, somewhere between uh, nine to 12 months. Uh, so somewhere up until July or, which is nine months, or October next year, which is 12 months. Uh, so this is a foggy area for me, whether we should have as much time of, of backporting new features to V1. Uh, and then bug fixes, and then all the way uh, to fill in here two years worth of uh, two years worth of LTS. So for LTS, it's going to be bug fixes for th three to six months, uh, and then high and critical fixes for six to nine months. In total, it's going to be two years. And this is what uh, what will match with the SDK. Uh, now, you might wonder uh, for specific PRs if they should be backported to one of these, uh, just based on what is the B what does PF actually mean in practice. They, today, we have uh, Dave, from Osmosis opening the PR, and it's a really, really neat performance optimization. Uh, does that qualify as bug fees? Does it qualify as a feature? Does it qualify as a, as a performance improvement? What, what is it exactly, and where do we put it? Uh, so there's a pretty complex decision tree that we use to decide that, and I would be very glad to go into details, but I think it may be a bit too much detail and a bit pedantic for the discussion here. Uh, just to know that we have spent a lot of time thinking about how do we backport PRs because we are maintaining so many versions and it's not easy. Uh, however, I think for the purpose of this discussion, it's fine if we just take an abstract um, understanding of what is bug fix, what is uh, new features, what is high and, high and critical fixes, and what is end of life, and we just work with this uh, abstract understanding. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm happy to describe what those are. Uh, okay, so. Then I'll, I'll I'll just stop here, and I could either recite these questions that are very very specific for me, or I'll just take a pause here and let people reflect on what I said so far. I'll just take a pause. Oh yeah, I see some thumbs up. Um, then I think I'll go into very specific questions because uh, I, I'd be very curious to know if anyone from who's still on 34, I won't like give specific names of, of chains that are on 34, uh, is anyone here and do they see a problem? Uh, this is a type. Do they see a problem with the Comet team marking the 034 end of life schedule for January 1st, 2025? I am very inclined to say we should we will do it even earlier. Um, this is we're still gathering input here, so this is not set in stone. Anyone sees a problem with it? Either way. Okay, no one is on 34. No one cares about 34. That's cool. Um, okay, I'll just make a note that potentially make this more aggressive. Um, which means we could do it uh, October 1st. Uh, this year, we could already mark uh, 34 end of life. I think it may be a bit aggressive, but we'll see. Okay, uh, for those who are on 37, uh, for instance, Osmosis, I know you guys are migrating from 037. Uh, I think, who else is here? Evmos, I don't know, Guillermo, if you are on 037 or not. See a couple of other teams. Uh, but I don't know exactly where everyone is from. So whoever is on O37, let me know if this is too aggressive. Can you just change that to 25? Uh, yeah, then, uh, then yeah, we're good on that. Awesome. Um, cool. Thanks, Adam. 38, which is SDK 50, which some chains have already migrated. Uh, both the hub and DYDX who are here, I think have migrated to 38 or are already on mainnet on 38. One full year, 
is this too conservative? I don't think it's a bit too conservative, but there were some uh, there was some feedback that. Okay, thank you, Guillermo. Appreciate it. Uh, DYDX is on yeah thirty eight, and it should be. I think it sort of just depends on how stable V one is, right? Like if the upgrade process is smooth and no one. It's finding any bugs, then it seems pretty reasonable to update in that time frame very easily. But <laughs> yeah, I guess there would be more concerns if it's like, oh, people are still finding bugs in say like early 2025, then maybe the timeline seems more concerning, but otherwise seems reasonable. If you think it's like a very low uh, risk change from 38 to one. Yeah, the, the biggest risk is actually PPTS. That's the only major feature that we're going to ship in V1. Um, that is Delta from Z 038. Um, and we are looking to audit it. Uh, it's actually impressively difficult to find an auditor. Um, it is, of course, possible that there will be bugs in, in, in V1 on... Uh, on the on the positive side, it's uh, it's not a very big feature. Uh, it doesn't change that many things. So I don't think it's very likely that it will affect uh, significantly um, or in critical ways. James. Uh, so okay, sounds good. Okay. Of course, we we can just adapt this uh, as we go along as well. Like maybe at the end of the year when we'll we'll have a bit more information and more insight into the the transition schedule of uh, other app chains we could uh, we could adapt this and make it more aggressive for longer yes i kind of going off of what DYDX is saying is that like it feels like uh the timeline is like strictly a function based off of the time in which the first person moves over um because if no one's moved over then then this, and then we're like, you know, two months out, then this timeline seems impossible. But if, you know, one or two have gone and they're relatively like, you know, uh, chains that have uh, a lot of usage and such, then then it totally seems plausible. You know, I think it just depends. Uh, we want to keep the hub. So we basically in a few weeks, <clears throat> we'll upgrade the hub to 50. And then we want to keep it at parity with the latest version. So of course we'll not upgrade in the first month or something like this, but we'll try not to be more than three months behind or something like ideally, uh, because it's a hassle to keep up if not. So this, we basically want to make the hub again to be a reference, a reference chain for the interchain stack. We are working with uh, with binary on this, so I guess this will help also with the adoption within uh, within Cosmos. Yes, we will. So that there's multiple good points here. It will be responsive. So in case the in, in case uh um okay there there were multiple points that were made. One of them is if the, the faster an app chain migrates um, and the more confidence that app chain provides to the rest of the ecosystem, suppose we will have Barra chain who's gonna launch on V1, uh, that will give a lot of confidence to other users, which is going to inspire others to also join uh, V1. Um, that was, that's a good point. And we are of course, very encouraging of, of chains that are uh, that are doing that, such as Barra chain. Um, then the second point that was made, which is it's, it's also an important point, we are, uh, yeah, the more bugs uh, or the more um, the faster chains move to a V1. If if there's bugs, then we push back end of life, which means we make it later on. So it's going to be responsive. If there's no bugs, no critical problems, uh, if chains move relatively fast, then we it's it's again responsive and we could make it more aggressive. So we we mark end of lives a bit faster. Um, and then the last point. Uh, Thanks, Marius, for adding uh, this perspective that the hub wants to be a reference chain for the stack. I think that's uh, very inspiring. Cool. Very smooth so far. Um, then on V1 LTS. On V1 LTS, there, there's only 
there's basically just one question whether um whether app chains uh, whether app chain teams imagine that they would like to have some sort of point of stability um where they would like to stay for multiple years for whatever reason uh, i think that can happen that's the purpose of an lts is to not need to think anymore about uh, about upgrades it's not necessarily a muscle that uh, we want to encourage that often but uh, yeah for that reason there will be new features still backported to v1 uh, the amount of new features will probably depend so this is also going to be optimistically responsive whether it's going to be uh, nine months or a full year it could be six months as well uh, that's why this part is, is, is a bit fuzzy here uh, it's we're going to adapt and see whether the chains prefer to stick around with v1 uh, regardless of that, it will be maintained for two years in, in terms of high and critical fixes. Uh, yeah, so then there is a tension here because the more we do a safe uh, feature that are backwards compatible and the more we backward those type of features into V1, uh, then the less capacity the team will have to focus on major refactoring. Um, Major refactoring are, uh, I, I mean, to, to be the kind of things that cannot be backported safely into V1, uh, either because they are uh, they are major changes in how the code works, they are ma major um, uh, redrawing of APIs and, and the boundaries between different components, and then you cannot push those. Uh, and they might not even have clear performance or immediate performance benefits to backport those into V1. Uh, so refactoring, I mean, to be things that we cannot uh, backward to v1 uh, so the more time we spend backporting to v1 the last time we can spend on on uh, on a major refactor and the last point i'm going to make and, and we can go into bit, a bit more details here if if i wasn't really really clear uh, the last point that i wanted to make is we've been wanting to work on on soft upgrades um, to simplify migrations uh, soft upgrades you can think of them as uh, built-in support in Comet to deal with each node can communicate with nodes that are on different versions. So you could have a Comet, you could have a validator on the hub that is running with PPTS, with PP, PPTS, and then you could have another validator on the hub that is running with without PPTS. PPTS is not a good example, actually, because all validators need to have it enabled. But there are, there are types of features uh, that can be softly migrated uh, through uh, in a in a relatively painless or seamless fashion, uh, and soft upgrades is the feature in in Comet that will allow some of those things to happen. Uh, and we would like to prioritize this. We haven't really managed to work on it actively so far because there was a lot of need for performance in zero thirty seven and zero thirty eight. So a lot of what we spent on time this year was. PBTS, which will land in V1, and then 37 and 38 uh, rel uh, improvements and efficiency uh, optimizations. Uh, but we would like to uh, to eventually go into doing soft upgrades so that once you're on V1, it's going to be significantly easier to go to V2 and to V3 and so on. Okay, I'll take another pause here in case anything I said was confusing or unclear, or anyone would like to give feedback on uh, on the aggressiveness or conservativeness of these of this, uh, timelines. Okay, there is nothing that's, that's, uh, that's good to hear. Uh, a specific follow-up for me will be to double check this with um, app chains that are on 34. If you know any, please, if you have friends uh, at, at those chains, uh, please tell them that we are thinking to mark this at end of life and then they're gonna, then it's gonna be difficult if there's a bug in Comet. Uh, probably there isn't, but uh, because 34 was so battle tested so far, uh, but it's still not really healthy to stay on a, on such an old version. Uh, so this is a very, very specific follow-up that I will take on my side. Uh, and then we will we will make also an asynchronous version of this schedule and publish it as a as a blog post so that uh, we can we can have further conversations on Twitter and on on, on on GitHub. Anyone else would like to go into into other 
parts of the discussion or, or discuss anything else besides what we went through so far? Going once, going twice. Awesome. So we're going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop recording.